The success of Gremlins in 1984 led to a subgenre of malicious little creature movies in the 1980s, such as Ghoulies, Munchies, Hobgoblins, among many others. But perhaps the most beloved and celebrated of these films was the 1986 film Critters, which was successful enough to spawn its own series of films, and perhaps doesn't deserve to be labelled as a ripoff of Gremlins. Greetings all you movie junkies and entertainment lovers, and welcome to another retrospective video. Today we're going to be talking about the Critters franchise. The original Critters begins in space on an asteroid prison as a group of dangerous alien creatures known as the Krites are set to be transported to another station. However, the Krites escape and hijack a ship heading to Earth. The Warden then hires two shape-shifting bounty hunters, Ugg and Lee, to pursue them. Studying life on Earth via various satellite television transmissions, Ugg assumes the form of a fictional rock star named Johnny Steele, while Lee remains undecided, staying a featureless head. Meanwhile, on a rural Kansas farm, young Brad Brown, played by Scott Grimes, overhears the Krites ship crash landing and goes to investigate, while the Krites themselves kill and feed on a local police officer and later find their way to the farm cutting its electricity. Meanwhile, the bounty hunters search the town for the Krites, causing panic at a church and a bowling alley, while Lee assumes the form of various townspeople, eventually settling for Charlie, the local town drunk, who becomes a more important character in later films. Later, Brad escapes the farm to get help and runs into the bounty hunters, and upon learning of their true nature and intentions, he leads them back to the farm where they attempt to destroy all of the remaining Krites. Although the film has often been considered to be one of those lower budget ripoffs with Gremlins, the original script was actually written many years earlier, but it's probably fair to assume that the film likely wouldn't have been made at the time if it were not for the success of Gremlins. But even with that said, the film really doesn't deserve to be labelled as a Gremlins ripoff. Other than the fact that they both focus on small maniacal puppet creatures, as well as the mix between humour and horror, the two films really don't share any other similarities. In fact, the script for Critters underwent multiple rewrites during production in an attempt to reduce the similarities between the two films. That being said, much of the reasons Critters works and is fondly remembered is for much of the same reasons as Gremlins. Much like Gremlins, Critters is able to strike a good balance between its humour and horror elements, with a lovable group of characters in addition to the Critters themselves, wonderfully designed and puppeteered by the Chiodo brothers, who were responsible for giving us another 80s cult classic with killer clowns from outer space. So although Critters might not have been as successful or fondly remembered as Gremlins, it certainly is much more than its generalized reputation as just being a cash-in on Gremlins. When the film was released in April of 1986, it was fairly well received making $13 million on a roughly $3 million budget. So with the first film being successful, a sequel titled Critters 2 The Main Course, which was released in 1988. The second film picks up with the same shape-shifting bounty hunters Ugg and Lee, who are now accompanied by Charlie from the first film, who have been taking on various bounties across the galaxy. They receive a new assignment informing them that the Krites have once again been detected on Earth and must be destroyed at once. Back on Earth, Brad Brown, once again played by Scott Grimes, returns to Grover's Band visiting his grandmother, shortly after the bounty hunters arrive with Ugg once again taking on the persona of rock star Johnny Steele, while Lee takes the image of a magazine centerfold cover model played by the late Roxanne Kernahan. Eventually, the critters begin terrorizing the town, growing in large numbers, but Lee is killed and devoured by the critters after they set a trap, causing Ugg to slip into a deep depression and reverting back to his alien form, leaving the people of the town to fight for themselves. The film was co-written and directed by Mick Garris, who many of us will probably know from his Stephen King adaptations including 1992 Sleepwalkers and the original 1994 miniseries version of The Stand. Critters 2 is considered by many fans of the franchise, including myself, to be the best entry, as it takes everything that works so well in the first film and amplifies it, whilst also adding its own elements as well. And not to keep comparing these films to Gremlins, but this one seems less afraid to be similar to Gremlins as it has a lot more individual Critters gags and comedic setups, giving it much more of a Gremlins feel than the first which is largely what makes this one so great, as it manages to mix humour and horror even more than the first film. 
It also happens to be set at Easter, making it one of the very few Easter-themed horror movies, if not the only one that is actually worth watching. But although Critters 2 might be just as beloved as the first film now, if not more so, unfortunately when it was originally released in April of 1988, it only grossed 3 million total on a 4 million dollar budget. Luckily, the film was able to have a second life on home video, with it being just as fondly remembered now as the first film. And with the first two films being as successful as they were on home video, ultimately that would be where the franchise would call its new home, as Critters 3 and 4 would be made back to back, both with the intent of going direct to video. Released in 1991, Critters 3 picks up with Charlie tracking down the last of the Critters as it finds its way to a family's car and lays more eggs. As the family leaves, they unknowingly take the eggs back with them to the city. They soon begin to hatch, terrorizing them as well as everyone else in their apartment complex. There's not much really notable about Critters 3 other than the fact that it was the film debut of Leonardo DiCaprio, who of course would later go on to do much better and bigger films. There's nothing really inherently bad about Critters 3 other than being noticeably lower budget and more forgettable than the previous films, especially after the amount of carnage we got in the last one. But it still has some fun moments, it's really only worth watching if you're a fan of the franchise. Then Critters 4, released just a few months later in 1992, picks up where Critters 3 left off with Charlie being stopped from destroying the last two cry eggs by a hologram message from Ugg who tells him that those two eggs are the last two in existence, and that destroying them goes against intergalactic law. Charlie then reluctantly places the eggs in a preservation pod, but whilst doing so has the hatch close on him, trapping him inside as it is launched into space, becoming cryogenically frozen in the process, and is accidentally awakened half a century later by the crew of a salvage ship, which noticeably includes a pre-famous Angela Bassett and Brad Dourif not playing a bad guy in a horror movie for once. The film in a lot of ways feels like it was almost originally supposed to be a more fun version of Alien, but during the production they decided to take a slightly more serious route. And with the budget being so low, there's not a lot in the way of Kerr's action, as most of the budget was probably spent on building the sets. But while many would consider this to be an even further step down from Kerr's 3, I personally think this is actually a slight improvement over Kerr's 3 as the futuristic space setting makes for a much more fun and entertaining watch than the dark closed spaces of the apartment complex in the previous film. And although it might not be on par with the first two films, it overall feels like a logical and somewhat satisfying conclusion to the original series of films. As unlike a lot of other franchises that went to space, Critters originally came from space. So this film felt kind of full circle in some ways, and it probably is where the series should have ended for good. But in this age of reboots, almost no franchise is safe, including the Critters. As after a 26 year absence, the Critters returned with two completely separate reboots, with Critters A New Binge in 2018 and Critters Attack in 2019, both of which pretty much are universally hated and considered to be very poor new entries that really are not worth anybody's time, trust me. So in my opinion, you're better off sticking with the original four. Overall, the Critters franchise might not be the best out there, but the first two films in particular are definitely worth watching, especially if you love your small killer puppet creature movies, like Gremlins. I mean, at least if you find yourself in a situation with Gremlins, you have certain rules you can follow to try to protect yourself, but with the Critters, all you can do is hope that there are some bounty hunters nearby, because if not, well, then you better hope you've got some cheeseburgers around. Thanks for watching this retrospective. Be sure to subscribe for more videos, and until next time, be sure to consume as much entertainment as humanly possible, and I will see you in the next video.